I am having all the problems today. I don't know what's going on with my streaming app, so I hope that this is working for you guys. Let me just check before we begin. But in the meantime, happy breakthrough with Barbara show. I hope that we are live the way that it's supposed to be. But we're not. Okay. It's okay. We will make it happen. Okay, so technology is driving me crazy today. <laughs> But anyway, we are here. Welcome to another episode of the Business Breakthrough with Barbara show. I, as always, I'm very excited for Monday mornings with you all. I'm going to talk about the number one subject that you guys always request, which is client acquisition. Hi, Julie. Welcome. Welcome to everyone that's here live. Let me know that you're here. Drop me an emoji. Um, what do you say? Yeah, tell me where you're tuning in from and all of that good stuff. I always love interacting with you guys. It's what makes this super, super fun for me. So, okay, not only am I going to talk about client acquisition today and what I do to attract clients I love, um, but I'm going to go deep into what has worked for me and what hasn't worked for me. And I'm going to like scratch the surface with the strategic stuff because we always talk about the strategic stuff and I'm always going to talk about the strategic stuff but I'm going to go even deeper as to like what is the internal piece that needs to be there at all times so I hope you are all ready I actually have a blog post coming out this week where I go deeper into strategic as well so that's coming out on Thursday keep your eyes peeled in the group um and yeah let's dive right in. Actually, before we begin, I do want to remind you that spots for Rise Up, my new six-week one-on-one coaching program are open. So if you want to sign up for that or you want to talk about if the program is for you, definitely book a discovery call after the live stream is done. I will post a link for that because there's only three spots available. One of them is gone. I only have two left. Um, and it's just amazing. I never really offer short term programs, but I know that so many of you need custom tailored support. You need someone by your side, helping you and guiding you, um, through the strategic steps of growing your business, telling you what to do, how to do it and all of that good stuff. But most importantly, especially when you're starting a business, you need someone helping you build your confidence, uh, making you understand and feel that you are capable and ready and enough and all of that good stuff, right? Like there's so much internal fears, doubts, and insecurities that come up when you are growing a business. So that's why I created this program because one-on-one coaching is the most powerful thing that you could do, obviously, if it's really good coaching. <laughs> but anyway, let's dive right in into the things that I do to attract clients. So let's just get this out of the way. Obviously, there is no question about this. If we want to attract clients we love, we have to consistently market ourselves, period, end of story. That's going to look different for everyone, right? Like everyone is going to have a different marketing strategy. Everyone is going to have a different dis visibility plan. Everyone's position and messaging is going to be different as well. You're going to be selling different things. But if you are not attracting clients you love, I want you to ask yourself how often and how consistently and how good am I marketing myself? And my services that's like number one strategic step like you gotta get out there you have to let people know that your program success right and a big mistake that i see here is you go out there you market yourself someone says no and oh we get some comments julie says hi hi talina hello hearts to you guys um yes it's me yes it's yes anyway um super excited for that too but um a big block that I see here with the marketing piece is, so I see a lot of people start to market, they go all in, they're super excited, they, things start to work, people are clicking on their links, people are booking calls, and then something doesn't go the way they expected it, right? So it's like, maybe they didn't get as many views on their page, or maybe they didn't book as many calls as they wanted to, or maybe they booked a call and the call say no, said no. And then that becomes the story of like, oh, this is not going to work. And therefore they back out or they slow down in their marketing efforts. We cannot do that if we want to consistently attract clients we love, right? We have to start seeing that 
part of our marketing process as part of the whole process, right? Like as we market and as we consistently let the world know that our programs, services, and offers are, um, what do you call it? Are there to support them and to help them achieve their goals or to help them solve whatever problem they have. Part of the process is going to be that some of the marketing is not going to go the way you expect it, right? Like it happens to me, it happens to all of my clients, it happens to pretty much everyone I know, right? Like through the journey of you and your clients as you market and and, and get visible and, and get let people know that you exist, there's going to be things that don't go the way you expect them to. The trick for a good marketing campaign is to follow through with the same energy of when you started until you get to the result that you want, right? If you start and then you encounter a little block or a disappointment or something doesn't go the way that you expected and then you back down from the marketing campaign, then what that means is you may still show up, but you're not fully showing up for it, right? Like you're showing up thinking that it's not going to work or you're maybe not showing up as much as you originally had planned, right? Like maybe you have planned to send 10 emails, but you're only sending like one a week because you are allowing that part of the journey that feels like a disappointment, that feels kind of hard to make you backtrack on that marketing strategy, okay? So no backtracking on your marketing strategy. We have to consistently move forward with that. You have, like there is no other way around it. If you want to work with clients you love, you gotta get out there, you have to keep pushing and you have to keep doing it, which is why one-on-one -on -one coaching is so important because I promise you along the way, there's so many things that are going to come up, right? So many things. Um, so that's step number one pretty obvious. I think everyone knows this, but it's always good to get a reminder of the importance of marketing visibility content, getting out there and getting your program in front of as many eyes as possible on a consistent basis without stopping in the middle, right? Without going like, I'm going to go all in one week and then I'm going to backtrack the, the next week, like all the freaking time. Okay. Next thing. We need to know if we want, okay, so cool. We get marketing out of the way. Now, how do you work with clients that you love working with? Um, there's a difference between like booking a client and then booking a client that you're like so excited to wake up every morning and serve, right? Like, I feel like that's what I've created my business to be that, to be like now, where it's like, all of my clients, I absolutely love and adore, and I love getting notifications from them in Slack. I love talking to them. I love supporting them. I love helping them through the ups, through the wins, through the really high income months, and also through the struggles and the difficult times in business. Like it is something that lights me up, but it wasn't always like that, right? Like I definitely have work with my fair share of clients who have felt a little bit more draining or you know, where it's not that it was a, more of like a difficult experience because I love when clients have difficulties. That's what I'm there for, to support them through that. It's more of like they were not my dream ideal clients. And let me tell you why. Because I didn't know what my dream client looked like. So if you want to work with clients you love, you need to know what those clients look like. And of course, you're going to need a little bit of practice. You may need to uh, hop on a few calls, get a, a few clients for you to be able to shape that. But the more clarity you have around who you want to work with, the easier it's going to be for you to attract them, to speak to them, to, um, to let them know that you're the coach for them and actually book them, right? Like if you're just trying to get clients just to get clients, there's nothing wrong with that, right? Like we have all gone through phases like that. But when you want to get even deeper into your client acquisition and you want to work with clients that you love working with, you got to get clear on that, right? So you want to think about your values, about what you love about your clients. It's not that you want to get a perfect client because if they're perfect, why would they hire you? I can't, I say this all the time. Um, if the, if your client has no struggles, they have no problems, they are booking clients all the time and they're making all the money and they never doubt themselves, then why would they hire you? Right? Like it's normal for in a coaching relationship, your client to have problems, but what we're looking for is not a perfect client. We're looking for 
a client that's in a line in values, right? So let me give you an example. I really value clients who take massive self-responsibility, right? So these are clients where if something is not working out, they're willing to go in and see what needs to change? What can they take responsibility for? What do we need to work through, right? If if I work with a client who's like, okay, cool, this is not working, but like, it's not my fault. Like I've just been trying anything, everything. And you know, it's just not my fault. It's just, it's, it's not my fault. It's not my problem. I'm just unlucky. I can't work with that type of client, right? Because it's like, well, we're not taking responsibility for the situation. And if we're not taking responsibility for the situation, then we can't implement the steps that is going to take for us to change it. So massive self-responsibility is a huge value of mine. I also really value clients who are willing to have fun along the way. Because let me tell you, growing a business is hard work. You can ask any of my clients. It's hard strategic work. A work it's our internal work like there is so much that we're working through on a day-to-day -day basis that's actually why um, I talk to my one-on-one -on -one clients every day almost every day because every day there is something that comes up it's not just about like okay cool this is what you're gonna do this is what you're gonna change this is how you're gonna do it it's like after we hop off the call that's when so much happens so we talk every single day because it is hard work and it is consistent effort that it takes to grow a, a really successful business right so i really love working with clients who will have a laugh with me in slack who will you know just have funny and fun moments with me and and they just, they, they, of course it's hard, but they're willing to have fun along the way. I love that about my clients. Um, what else? What else? So what's another value that I have in my ideal clients? Let me give you one more and then we'll move on to the main thing that I wanted to share with you today. Um, massive self-responsibility, have fun along the way. Um, time. Okay. This is something that I look for in clients so much. My time is extremely limited so that I can serve my one-on-one -on -one clients, right? Meaning my day is very structured, it's very scheduled. I know when I'm checking in and checking their work. I know when I'm having sessions. I know when I'm working on my marketing. Like my, my week is very, um, it's really structured so that I can serve my people. And I really value my time and I value other people's time a lot. Like, I am not very often late. Like if I'm late, I'm like a few minutes late and I will always let you know. Um, I will always let you know that I'm a few minutes late and it's usually because a client call ran a little late, right? Um, but time is something I value a lot. So there was a period of time, no pun intended, where um, I was working with clients who were like showing up late to calls, like they would like show up like half an hour late to a discovery call and you know the, the session would like overrun like an extremely long period of time which obviously that goes back to my boundaries and stuff but once I got clear so like look I really um, value this from clients, people who show up on time and um, value my time as well then it's so funny even like the few clients i had at the time once i stated that intention as to something i value in my dream clients and once i started setting the boundary for that even those clients stopped uh doing the things that they were doing like uh going uh way longer in the session or like showing up late or like canceling their sessions last second right like it's just crazy when you set the intention as to who you want to work with even the people that you're working with start to change because you start to shift the boat and the boat shifts with them um yeah and some days are harder than others exactly okay so you're gonna have days that are fireworks exciting that you are you know celebrating so many beautiful things and booking clients and feeling really good and then you you're definitely going to have days where it's like oh my god what did i get myself into can i really do this like everyone experiences that and it's just a matter of navigating that like with ease and fun and the right support so that you don't get stuck there for too long that's the trick the trick is not for you to be perfect and the trick is not for you to try to make business easy all the time the trick is for you to be like, okay, it's going to be easy and hard. And also I'm really good at navigating the hard moments because I can get out of them really fast. Okay. That's the trick. 
They also want to change things in their business and ready to do things to make it happen. Yes, love that. Love that. Yes. Okay. So that's in complete alignment to step number two. Be really clear as to who your clients are. So that's an amazing piece of clarity there. Hi, Brianna. Welcome. Awesome. Love boundaries. Of course you do. It is such an important piece in anything in life. In relationships, Brianna, you know this, in your personal life, in your business, if you don't have those boundaries there, then it's going to be really, really hard for, for you to be happy, right? It's like, if I want to go to sleep early and my boyfriend wants to stay up until 3 o'clock in the morning and I stay up until 3 o'clock in the morning, whose fault is that, right? Like, it's me. I didn't set the boundary of, like, I want to go to bed early and wake up early, right? So there's so much self-responsibility that comes with um, also attracting clients you love. Okay. So we got the strategic piece market, very broad. If you feel like I was broad on this, it was intentional. I promise you, I will expand on marketing and all that stuff in other episodes. Show up every Monday at 10 AM. We talk all things growing a business. I have actually talked about this in the past, so you can even see past episodes. Trust me, the strategic side is something that I teach all the time because I know it's uh, kind of like a, I don't know, this is like difficult to decide or to know how to market online. So it's something I teach all the time. I don't want to go that deep into it because that's not the main message of today. Um, second thing is know that you're like what your clients that you love working with look like. And then I think this is something that I've never shared before. And I, it's such a powerful magnetizing idea this is more of like the internal piece of booking clients you love so a concept that a lot of people don't understand is if you want to book clients that you love i really highly encourage you to be the client that you wish to be okay i think nelson mandela has a quote like that kind of like be the person that you wish to be or be the change you wish to be something like that so powerful, right? Like if you want people to be kinder, then be kinder yourself. If you want your kids to be more courageous, then be more courageous yourself. And it's the same idea here. If you want your clients to um, do the work, do the work yourself. If you want your clients to open up with you, open up with your own coach yourself, right? Or with your friends, whatever. Like what you expect from your dream clients, you need to expect from yourself. And there's so many reasons as to why this is so powerful. Number one, when you are showing up as that client, right? Like if you want your clients to invest and do the scary thing, you got to invest and do the scary thing yourself. Here's why. Because if you don't, there's going to be dissonance, right? Like you're expecting something from someone that you are not or that you don't do or that you don't show up for. So when you expect it from someone else, you're not going to believe that that's possible. Like you're not going to, it's going to be hard for you to believe that there are clients out there who would do that and show up like that if you're not doing it yourself. Because internally, like even if you, your brain, you're like, yeah, 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 I can get clients. Internally, there's going to be something that says like, well, can I really do this? Because I'm not really doing this myself. You know, can I really get clients who show up on time for sessions? Because I'm not showing up on time for my stuff, right? Like, I say I'm going to wake up at 8 and I wake up at 12, whatever. Definitely have been there. Um, I say I'm going to get visible and I only get visible for two days and then I don't. I say I'm going to push through my fears and I want my clients to push through their fears and I let fear get in the way and keep me stuck for way longer than what it needs to be. So this is the most important piece here. It's like you want to be the client that you wish to be. And I'm not saying you have to go all out and be like, I'm going to go crazy and do all the things and whatever, sell my soul in the process. Like that's not what I'm saying. It's just like there needs to be congruency with what you want and who you're being. Is this making sense? Because I feel like this is more of like an etheric topic more of like the internal piece. So it's a lot harder to comprehend these things and to explain them in a logical way. But that's the most logical way I want. I, I, I can explain it. It's like, if you want something and you are not being that something, then it's going to be hard for you to believe that that something is meant for you. 
And if you don't believe that that's something is meant for you, while you market, while you market your products, while you get visible, while you create content, while you hop on calls, it's going to be hard for you to uh, to to get that to tie those two things together. Because yeah, you may be doing all the external work, but internally you just don't think that that's going to work, or that's even possible, or that those clients even exist. Yeah, please tell me if. I'm making any sense to you if not i'll go deeper and i'll try to give you different examples um because this is such an important thing talina says makes perfect sense beautiful okay um so let me just go a little deeper here let me give you a few more examples so let's uh, and let me just show you because this is a very important piece of this step it's not about being a perfect coach i sure as heck I am not a perfect coach. I get angry. I get into fights. Um, you know, there's days where I do wake up late and I didn't mean to, right? Like, it's not about per being a perfect coach. It's not, a, there's definitely times where I have fear and where I can easily go into self sabotaging mode. And my clients know this. My clients know that I'm a human being right? Like we're not working with robots. <laughs> if we were working with robots, it would kind of be a little easier, right? Like we just kind of like program them to do what we want them to do. And then they go and do it. We're working with a human being. And my clients know that they're working with a human being, but it's not about being perfect. It's about always being willing to be the best version of yourself. Okay. So example, let's say you are a relationship coach right and you are teaching clients let's see you are teaching clients how to find mr right by loving yourself first okay so beautiful concept super powerful concept so you teach your clients how to find mr right by loving yourself first but you spent all day talking about how horrible you look and how much you ate that you didn't want to eat and looking at yourself in the mirror and hating your body, right? Like that's, it's okay for you to doubt yourself and question yourself and maybe have some moments of not feeling so self lovey That's not a problem. The problem is when you're not doing the work that you tell your clients to do. Okay, so if you're not doing the work that you tell your clients to do, how can you expect your clients to do it? And even further than that, how can you expect your clients to want to hire you on an energetic level? So it's the same idea when it comes to attracting clients, right? Like if you want your clients to be like, heck yes, I'm ready to do this. You know, I'm moving through the fear, investing, doing this. And you're like, yeah, but I'm not ever like even invested like five dollars into my business then I'm not saying it's not going to work. I'm just saying it's going to be a little bit harder, right? Because it's harder for you to believe that people are willing to do that because you're not willing to do that themselves. Okay, same idea with coaching. It's going to be harder for your clients to get results because it's going to be hard for you to believe that people are willing to love themselves and to do the work that you're teaching because you're not doing it yourself, okay? Um, let's see. Yes, I need to be the kind of client I want to attract. Exactly, exactly. It's really that simple. And and you don't need to go crazy with it, right? Like you don't need to be like, I'm perfect. I wake up every day and I love my body and I never doubt myself. And you know, this little thing over here, I love. I have no problem with it. And like, you don't need to be fake. You don't need to be crazy. Like you just need to always be willing to do the work and to be a better person, right? So. I just told you before, I'm not a perfect coach. There are times where I wake up late. So I'm willing to look at that and be like, okay, cool. I woke up late. This is pushing back my day. This is not helping me serve at my highest capacity. How do I, what do I do about this? How can we change this? How can we make it better? Maybe I can push back my alarm clock or go to bed earlier. It's little things like that, that make you the client that you want to be, right? So if I expect my clients to value their time and to value my time, I have to value my time. Does that mean that I'm going to always be perfect? No right? And this is such a big piece of attracting clients you love for a few things. One, you can believe that the client that you want is out there. You can believe that those clients exist because you are that client yourself. And two, when it comes to a marketing and strategic standpoint, energetically, as you do things and you are the person that you want to work with, you are going to attract more of those people, right? You 
told like once you're in business for a long time and you've been working your business consistently you're going to start seeing that a lot of times you attract clients that are struggling with similar things that you are that are thinking similar things that you're thinking right so like once you see that consistently like when i market and i'm being this person i attract that type of individual and then when i market and i'm being this other person i attract that kind of individual and it happens over and over again you're going to see that it's not just an internal magnet that you're creating but it's also an external piece like that shows up in your content that shows up in your videos that shows up in your marketing right like it really showcases who you are and it's going to be easier to attract those clients who are willing to do the work who are willing to invest who are willing to do the thing okay um let's see we got few more comments i show up committed but i don't attract clients who are committed okay cool so obviously this is going back to the first thing i i said in the beginning marketing is not always going to work exactly the way that we want it to right so we want to go from point a to point b without zero struggles without ever hopping on the phone with someone who's not committed does that make sense the, those are the little downs that are going to happen through your um through your marketing campaigns, through your marketing goals, right? Like you may work with a few people who are not committed while you are committed, right? Like you may hop on the phone with individuals who are just not your ideal fit, right? Like I think we started this with like, there's going to be ups and downs through the marketing campaign. So what I would suggest here is if you're point A to point B and you're kind of like on that uh, stage of, get invisible, get like marketing and, and um, working with clients. And it's still like, it's not even close to what you want it to be, right? Like, let's say maybe it's not feeling easy. Let's say maybe your clients are not committed. Let's say whatever, whatever. Um, it's easy. It's easy to stay stuck in that specific situation and look at that specific thing. Like, oh my God, this clients are not committed and I'm committed. So that means that it's not working. But what I need you to do is I need you to expand a little bit and look at the whole marketing spectrum, right? Like just look at it as like, cool, working with these clients who are not committing, committed, it's just a step in the marketing plan. It's not even close to the whole thing. Like, hold on, let me come here. Like I'm still going from point A to point B. I'm just like right here. And right now this is a low in the marketing plan. So try to look at it as like, that's not your end result. That's just a piece of your journey, right? Like you are working with clients who are not committed. What's going to happen now? It's like you're going to gather that data, see what's not working, shift what needs to shift internally in your marketing, in your wording, in your positioning and all that good stuff. And we got to keep moving through that marketing plan until you find those clients who are committed, right? Like you got to kind of like come out in a bird's eye view and try to look at your specific situation right now as if that's not the end all be all that's not where you're going to be a month from now two months from now three months from now that's not who you're going to be working with three months from now this is just a stage in your marketing that kind of feels sucky and it feels annoying and a little draining and disappointing totally get that you're allowed to feel that but it's not the whole marketing campaign you're not done you, you don't need to feel like this is it like i'm working with clients who are not committed and that's what i'm uh, that's what's going to happen for the rest of my, the life of my business. Not true at all, right? Like the, the only way that that stays that way is if you stay there. If you think that this is the ultimate result, working with non-committed clients and there's nothing else to look at, right? Like that's the only way that you stay there. If you come out and you look at your whole business and you're like, awesome. So I marketed a little bit, didn't really work, didn't really get the clients I wanted. So like, let's keep moving through the marketing phases um and let's learn let's gather data from this like what worked what didn't work what what did i like what didn't i like what could i have done differently let's keep moving through it that's there is no way <laughs> like it, it, i i know that sometimes it sounds like a little bit too much but there there is really no way that you will not succeed and that you will not work with clients that you love working with if you keep going through the marketing plan until you get to point b there's no way like you can ask any of my clients, they have gone through ups and downs in their marketings, all of them. There's, it's so, it's such a, it's such a disservice to you to tell you like, you know, my clients start working with me and they go from point A to point B without difficulties, with all perfection. Like, no, 
It's business, right? They all go through ups and downs. So the only way that you don't get to where you want to be, that you don't get to work with the clients that you love to work with, who pay, who are committed, who love the work, who love the work that you do, who are excited to show up, who take self-responsibility and whatever else you value in your ideal client, the only way that that doesn't get to happen is if you stay here, right? So you're here right now, totally can change. Gather data, learn from it, create a new plan, right? Like how can you enhance what you're doing? How can you make it a little better? How can you attract different people? What needs to change in your language? What needs to change in your positioning? Does there need to be a little bit of a change in your message? Does there need to be a little bit of a change in your consistency? Does there need to be a little change in myself? Like whatever that is, you gather the data, you learn from it, you shift and you keep going, okay? And that is how you move through the ups and downs of marketing your business and and getting clients that you love. I think it's such a, the online world, this is the last thing I want to say because I don't want this to be like extremely long for you guys, but the online world, this is something that you need to understand, banks on telling you that you do not need to live a human experience while you grow a business. So a lot of things that you see out there like coaching programs, courses, challenges, whatever, they will tell you in their marketing, like, get a client with absolutely no problems and without feeling any kind of disappointment or any emotion at all whatsoever. You'll never feel sad. You'll always get what you want. And if you buy this program, you will never, ever have to struggle ever, ever in your life. Okay, great. Awesome. Cool marketing. I'm sure it's somewhat effective, but here's the truth. That gives you the wrong idea. of what it actually is like. Yes, of course, with time, it gets easier. I promise you, with time, it gets easier. With time, your belief grows, so your actions grow, and your communities grows, and your marketing is kind of like repetitive in the sense of like, People have seen you for a while, so it's easier to book clients. You create more ease along the way. But those things that you see of like, you will not ever experience any kind of downfall or disappointment as you grow your business if you buy this program, I would run away from. Like I really would run away from that because that's just not the way it works, right? Like, Yeah, you can get from point A to point B and you can have the business of your dreams and the business that you love. No doubt about that. Like seen it dozens of times with my own clients, obviously have done it myself. But the thing is, you don't need to make yourself wrong if you're working with clients who are not committed right now. There's nothing wrong with that. It just means you took action. It didn't work the way that you wanted it to. We're getting back up and we're doing it different again to get different results. That's it. It's really, it's just part of being in business. So don't feel like you need to have a perfect, uh, what do you call it? Perfect and a journey without any kind of negative or not even the word negative or any kind of like quote unquote disappointment or things not working out the way you expect them to. It's normal. And the, the more that you can understand that and be like, Oh, cool. So this is just a part of business that no one talks about. Awesome. So I'm here. Can totally get out of that like this. It can be done with patience and consistency. Nothing comes overnight. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, with that same token, like, yeah, it's not going to come overnight, but it also doesn't have to take forever, right? Like we just need to get really good at being like, Okay, cool. So I moved three steps forward. I started working with clients I don't love, so I'm going to move one step back, you know? So the trick here is when that happens, right? Like, are we going to keep showing up? Are we going to keep pushing forward? Or are we going to let that be like the driving thoughts that drive our actions? Because that's going to make it so much longer of a journey, right? When... I feel like I can talk to you guys forever, but this is really the last thing I'm going to say. I think one of the reasons why I've been able to grow my business to way to where it has been is because I try and I'm not perfect at this. Trust me, you can ask Nick. He will tell you I am definitely not perfect, but I try not to make myself wrong in my business, right? So like if I launch something and it doesn't work, like, yeah, it feels really bad. I may even cry. I may call up my best friend or message my coach about it and, you know, wallow on my PD for a little bit, but then I'm like, you know what? It's not a big deal. 
Like, I'm just going to keep doing what I need to do until it works. So I think that's one of the reasons that's going to drive so many people, that drives so many people's success. It's like, don't make yourself wrong if something didn't work out. It's not the end of the world. Like right around the corner, it's the thing that's going to work out. And it's the thing that's going to attract the thing that you want to attract. So the less that you can make yourself wrong for wherever you are right now, like it's not a big deal. If you're going through a shitty stage in your business, it's not a big deal, right? Like you're going through it, you feel it, you cry, you process it, you move on. We all do. So don't make yourself wrong um, so much because that's creating so much pressure and that's keeping you stuck and that's keeping your uh, journey to success longer than what it needs to be. The more that you make yourself wrong, the more that you stay staying wrong. So like, let's say you went all in in your business for a year, you achieved something and then all of a sudden the past six months, you haven't showed up, right? Like God knows why. I don't even know. Maybe you feel bad. Maybe you went through a difficult time in life. Maybe you started believing that it wasn't going to work out or I don't know, maybe you got a new boyfriend and that boyfriend kind of like distracted you from your business. If you spend another six months thinking of like, oh my God, why am I here? How could I have let everything go for the past six months? And I'm such a horrible person and this is such a horrible thing. And now I don't have any clients. Why would I have done that? The more time that you spend on making yourself wrong when things happen in your business, the less time that you have to be like, okay, cool. I'm here. This sucks. I shouldn't have done that, but whatever. Let's keep moving forward. Like you, you are going to achieve so much more if you can just be like, eh, no big deal. Hey, no one signed up for this call. No big deal. Let's promote it again next week. Hey, I'm working with clients who are not committed. No big deal. Let's change my marketing and let's change my wording to clients who are. Or hey, uh, my group's not really growing. No big deal. What can I do to grow it more? Like, do not make yourself wrong in business. <laughs> okay. The more that you make yourself wrong, the harder you're making this journey for yourself. And with that said, I am dropping my mic today and leaving you all with this pieces of wisdom i hope you guys enjoy this let me know if you're here live or if you're watching the replay what you love the most what you're going to implement tell me all the things tell me who is your ideal client tell me what are the things that you're going to do to show up as the client that you wish to be tell me if you've had an experience where you have beat yourself up in your business and made yourself wrong. Just tell me other things. Chat with me. Let me know. Um, obviously, set notifications for Mondays at 10 a.m. Eastern where I come here live to teach you all things about growing a six-figure business through strategy, confidence, and intuition. Um, other than that, if you're booking a discovery call for Rise Up, the six-week one-on-one coaching program, I cannot wait to talk to you. If you are reading my blog on Thursday, I cannot wait to hear your thoughts. And obviously, I will be here in the group hanging out with all of you from Monday through Sunday, pretty much every day. Um, I love you all so much. Thank you for being here live. There can be no rainbow without the rain. Ah, oh, such a good end to this. There can be, this is from Brianna. There can be no rainbow without the rain. Such a good way of seeing things, right? Like even when it's raining, we know it's going to stop raining. And we know that so much beauty comes from that. And when we can do it that way, it's just so much easier. Ah, thank you for that amazing ending. Love you guys so much. I will talk to you guys next Monday. Um, yeah, keep rocking it. Keep rocking it. Don't make yourself wrong. And do your thing. Do your thing. <laughs> Bye, everyone.